Ever since the time when man began to control his environment, he has been plagued by his limited ability to speculate. His failure to accurately predict the effect and the consequences of his proposed action. The old adage has it that necessity is the mother of invention. Nowhere is this truer than in the field of plastics. Plastic, plastic, plastic. What are plastics? My name is Stacy Schaub Sabo. I work for S Cubed Environmental and I'm a professional dumpster diver. Now, what that means is I do have training. I am a biologist, I'm a professional biologist, and I also have a master's of science in agriculture, food, and nutritional science. However, when I tell people that, it's like the glaze over. So what I really love to tell people is that I'm a professional dumpster diver. And then they ho I hope that they'll ask me questions about, well, what does that mean? So I have been a consultant since my daughter was born 17 years ago. I worked with government and consulting companies. And back in the day, they didn't hire part-time moms and I wasn't wanting to go full-time. So when I, I came out on my own to do work. I started working with the network and had people that needed some assistance, particularly doing waste audits or sorting garbage in different aspects of their work. And as a result of that, uh, after five years, I'm like, hey, there is a real market in this and started my own company called S Cubed Environmental. And so since then, I have been on my own working with different partners, partnering on different projects, and it's been a wonderful career so far. So my name is Matthew Bladdock. I'm the founder and principal of uh, Village Electronics Recycling in Calgary. Uh, my background is uh, I'm trained as an urban planner and I've worked in waste management for about six years before starting this company. So what I do is I help businesses evaluate the programs that they have within their offices or I help a municipality evaluate what their programs are in order to reduce waste going into the landfill. My name is Adekumbi Adetano, I go by Kumbi. I have a PhD in biological sciences from the University of Calgary. My research is about how we can better manage our biological system nature-based solutions towards climate change. Uh, we looked at the energy and carbon flows within the agri-food and forestry systems. The management of that to meet net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Prior to that, I did my MSc at the University of Saskatchewan, and I worked as an environmental scientist with a consultant firm here in Calgary. Currently, I'm a policy analyst, and I'm using my research to inform policy and investment decisions relating to climate change. So my name is Manny Kamba and uh, my business is Sage Hill Bottle Depot. Uh, I went to school for kinesiology and I studied, uh, had a minor in psychology and was actually really, you know, entertained by like how the body works. And this is something that the Bottle Depot business was something I just kind of, I grew up into. Like I've been, my parents had a first location back in 2006 in Chestermere and we've been, you know, helping out and just doing kind of work with them since that age. Hi, welcome to my home. My name is Hafsat Adebayo. 
I'm an urban planner and an environmentalist. So basically what I do is I educate people. I do community engagement on waste management and waste reduction practices. And so to me, waste means that it's a resource that just hasn't been photo fully captured or fully utilized. And there was one event that I attended and it was an environmental activist. Her name is Julia Butterfly Hill. And her comment was, well, when you throw something away, where is a way? And that really resonates with me. Waste, the definition of waste is kind of vast because it depends on the angle that you're looking at it. But generally, waste are unwanted materials, materials or substances that are not being used, or can, they could be defective. As a result, they are not worthy to be used. And you could also define waste as materials at the end of life. You've used it, and these include municipal solid waste, radioactive waste, hazardous waste. And according to research that was done in 2021, in Canada, our municipal waste is around 2.33 kilograms per capita. This actually makes us one of the, the largest, second largest producer of waste in the world after the US. So this is really important for us to address. People as a society as whole take waste and they see it as something that they don't want anymore. And that doesn't always mean that it's done in a sustainable way. Waste is something that people just want to dispose of and they don't understand the environmental cost and, and the economic barriers that this creates when we just throw, let's say, cans or recycling in the landfill because those are opportunity costs that we're now losing. So waste is something that can be used in a circular environment. Circular environment is something where people can and the manufacturers come together, right? The manufacturers create the products we consume the products and then we send them back to the manufacturer to be able to recreate the same product instead of letting it go and creating a negative feedback loop. So we've been in business for two years now and we started this business because electronic waste and e-waste um, is a huge, huge scourge on the world and the environment when not disposed of properly. 20% of the households in Canada do not dispose of e-waste properly through the proper channels and over 80% of e-waste in the world is not properly diverted. So there's a huge opportunity for us to help people recycle and properly manage their IT assets and electronic waste that they no longer need. Nobody wants a landfill in their backyard. And if we continue to be consumeristic and buy without thought to where that material is going, there are going to be challenges for where to place that material. And as you know, right now, landfill space or securing space for landfills is very controversial. So we don't want to create waste. What I'd love to have people consider is that let's try and have reusable items in, his, in everything that we do so that we don't have to find a home for that material that is disposable. Well, a lot of electronic waste contains materials in it that are recyclable and are recoverable. And a lot of electronic waste contains toxic uh, elements and toxic chemicals that are extremely hazardous if released into the environment, such as lithium, uh, you know, there's bromides that are used for flame retardants, um, mercury is a very common uh, toxic chemical that appears. So it's very important that these items are uh, recycled and processed and reused um, appropriately uh, so that there is no threat to the environment. I mean, throwing mercury into a landfill puts water systems at risk. Uh, around the developing world, people are burning titanium and lithium, which creates huge uh, air quality issues. So there needs to be proper handling of electronic goods. And again, unfortunately in Canada, 20% of that from households gets diverted um, improperly. And 80% of e-waste around the world gets thrown into the dumps, which is a huge, huge uh, threat to our environment. When we come to the Ball Depot or we recycle things, we don't throw them into the blue bin and have them go into the landfill, we can create a compound effect which actually builds over time and can have some sort of impact to the unsustainability that's already there in the world. And there's also economic factors like I said. So let's say instead of um, the recycling or cans and stuff like that going into the landfill, where we now has, as taxpayers, we have to pay a bunch of money to be able to manage and to remove and to sustain of that in a way where like um, 
the environment can actually take the recycling, right? We can now bring it to a ball depot and we can have it be reused. Like it takes 90% more effort for a can to be created. And it, it takes way less energy for it to just be constantly replicated. A can can be over and over and over again replicated and broken down and recreated and it doesn't cost any energy or money to the significant degree that it would to make a new one. The amount of e-waste globally disposed of in 2030 is going to be double the amount since 2014. So th there is going to be always demand and with the internet of things and with everything becoming more and more automated and you know circuit board oriented, there is going to be a lot more um, demand for recycling, there's gonna be a lot more items that can be recycled, including items that are unserviceable, especially with the amount of proprietary sort of software where things get cloud locked and then, right, the reuse options uh, are shrinking. So uh, industries, you know, producers of electronic items are kind of at a juncture where, you know, with the power of the cloud, they have the ability to take perfectly usable devices and make them obsolete you know, from the manufacturing source. We've kept 100,000 100, metric tons of waste out of the landfill, right? And that's just one part of it. The way the landfills are run these days, right? A lot of methane gas is contributed to the ozone layer, layer based off of how the organic matter is being thrown into the landfills. And having more, you know, bottles or cans or things there that can't be, you know, biodegradably broken down is just gonna add to that effect especially when it ends up into the water beds or water streams and we're having like pollution in our animals then. In our household, we make sure that all food waste, that we put it in the grain bin. And then when we do this, we, uh, we believe that when you, the program is available, you don't put your organic uh, waste in the black bin because it ends up in, the, in landfill. And what that does for the environment is that when food materials go in the landfill, it emits uh, methane, which is not good for the environment. And that is how the waste that you generate out, it is connected to climate change. When you dispose certain waste, especially the ones that degrade, and degradation is the, there's a reduction in the amount of waste due to microbial activities. And those ones, when the environment is good, low oxygen or no oxygen, it's called anaerobic condition, certain microorganisms thrive in this environment and they release methane into the atmosphere. And methane is one of the greenhouse gases that we're worried about. So when you have the organic option in your neighborhood, in your city, make sure to use it. Make sure that you are putting all your food waste in the organic bin. And what makes methane even more challenging is that the global warming potential of methane is around 25 to 34 times higher than CO2. And global warming is talking about the power or the impact of this GHG relative to CO2. So it's really essential that we increase efficiency of production to reduce waste and to also ensure that these waste are not contributing to climate change issues that we are facing right so now. So there's certain social and economic factors that come into why managing waste is very important, right? So first and foremost, I believe that it's the most logical thing to do. We live in a world that's become highly unsustainable and we're very unaware of like the micro actions that we take that can actually help to reduce and to help bring the health of the earth in a way where like it can be sustainable. Whether that may be a long shot, but I feel like it's kind of our moral duty in a sense to do something that's correct for the environment that we have and for the longevity of like the people that are gonna to continue to live on after us. So economically, if you think about it, if waste is ending up into like the river beds or like the water streams or in the landfill, that's a huge economic opportunity cost that we have. That can be used to like drive more jobs. That could be used to have people come in and have an extra, you know, income for their month. It's not being used in a sustainable way and that's why I think doing that and having waste be a, a pivotal thing in someone's, you know, lifestyle is something that's going to help them in a, in a more long-term way. I've done many audits for buildings, office buildings and different property managers. Office buildings have a lot of opportunity for waste reduction. First of all, it could be converting all their print jobs to double side printing. Second would be when they get their catalogs, when they purchase different supplies, make sure they are off their mailing list of getting hard copies. Everyone is totally accessible to internet now. 
The other element when we're doing our waste audits is I find that centralized waste stations are so much more efficient. And what that means is rather than having an employee with a, a garbage bin, a recycling bin, that they remove those so that that employee actually has to walk to the kitchen and empty their materials into the various bins for garbage recycling, organics, beverage containers. And another aspect that's really helpful is to embrace reusable items. Have that corporate social responsibility that a water bottle should be water from the Calgary tap into a reusable mug. A coffee cup should be a reusable mug. Don't generate something that needs to be managed, either landfill or recycled. Canada is a signatory to the Basel Convention, uh, which is uh, an international treaty with respect to the proper disposal of e-waste. So Canada as a signatory to that requires that there is adherence to it, but it also is the best, one of the best practices because one of the most fundamental issues with electronic waste in our industry is the export of e-waste to developing nations where child labor will be processing and burning and uh, handling extremely toxic chemicals. We uh, do not export e-waste um, to developing nations. We uh, handle most of our processing within Alberta. So, I mean, when you're exporting e-waste, you're burning fuel, there's a lot of, you know, sort of unknowns. So having Canada signatory to that sort of levels the playing field because there are bad actors in this industry that will, uh, you know, take advantage to make a quick buck to export their e-waste. I know that hierarchy of waste management may not fit into different production processes, but it is better to have this at the back of one's mind what are the ways that I can reuse these things or the substance that I've created to reduce emissions? Then we can recycle. We do this already. For example, in the forestry system, you see people would turn paper. They might even convert that into energy. So that paper that's supposed to be a waste is now a feedstock for energy production. The other thing that we do in a house that you can do at the household level or as an individual is um, when we clean in the house, things that we use, we make sure that we are using reusable materials. So for me in my kitchen, I'm very passionate about my kitchen being clean. That means if I have to be using disposable materials, I would be using a lot, which is not good for the environment. So I use washable clothes for my kitchen. I use this to dry my sink to make sure that everything is properly done. And then for my dishes, we make sure that we are using our uh, washable clothes, um, towels that we have that we use. We use it for drying the dishes and we have some that we use for hand drying as well. And then we have similar towels like this that we use for the cleaning of the floors. When we finish, we put it in the washing machine. We sterilize it, it's clean, it's uh, reusable. Those are simple measures that you can do at home that's contributing to the environment. And as well, you are helping your pockets because you are not buying disposable things that you are using, you are disposing. There was a saying that I'm adopting and it's creating an army of one. So my mission is to create an army of one. And what I mean by that is people need to be informed about a passion, about a need, and be informed to do the right action and make the right decision on what they are making choices on. So we as humans, we are naturally buyers of stuff. So maybe as a person, the, as an army of one, you're saying, oh, I'm not going to be buying something that has lots of plastic packaging. Or if I'm gonna go and have a coffee, I'm going to bring my reusable coffee mug because I realize that I can have personally an impact on not reducing something that needs to be managed. Bottle depots, especially in Alberta, are all privately owned and operated. And we, we put all our funding into having these establishments work. So that means no taxpayers pay any sort of um, dollars to have these things around the cities to actually help contribute to sustainability. And so the whole aspects uh, of waste reduction is to not generate that material in the first place. And 
if you do generate it, is that material something that can be composted? Is that material something that can be recycled? The other things that we do in the house is we don't use plastic straws in the house. We try as much as possible to use metal straws. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, how do I clean this? Yes, you can clean it. We have different brushes that you can use to clean it. When you clean it, so this is what we do. We, I use this to make sure that it's clean. Then I put it in the dishwasher to sterilize and it's ready to use another time. When you use plastic straws, you are just contributing to the materials that is being taken to the landfill. So let's um, encourage ourselves, let's um, try to imbibe the habits of using things that are reusable. Uh, or don't even be that consumerism. Consider the thrift stores or your neighbors, or now there's buy nothing events. Right, we do create a circular economy this way and we do help the environment, whether people know it or not. And I think them contributing to the bottle depots, wherever they may be, whether the lines are long, whether it smells, whether it's a great facility, they are doing something good, so they can at least feel that in the bottom of their hearts that they're making a change, whether it may be a little bit or a lot. Hello everyone, I, I am an operating manager here. I will show you how we operate the system. Just follow me guys. Glass, everything we have. And there is a total money around here. And this, this is our bag where we put our, our after putting up, filling the buckets, I will put our, our buckets on the buckets. So we, we put glass in these mega bags and, and put, put this ring uh, forward. If all the rings are forward, then we put out this new bag, old bag and put the new bag in here. Here we depressed all the cardboard and uh, uh, you can see the, there, the cardboard material uh, inside the pallet. So this is an open space for the trailer. Uh, the trailer will come uh, through the backside and come here and we will load the big forklift. So that's all we do. Thank you so much. It is everybody's responsibility to manage waste. And I'm going to go back to the hierarchy. I'm tempted to say we should have a picture of the hierarchy in our homes. You can see what can I do to prevent waste, refuse to generate waste. What are the ways I can do to recycle, to reuse, so that in the end, the amount of waste that end up in a landfill site is just very small. Don't try to tell yourself that's so all what I do doesn't really matter. I'm just one person, I'm just an individual. If everybody is thinking that way, then nobody will be doing anything. What you do as an individual matters. Take the time to educate yourself, take the time to find out what is going on, take the time to to find out how you can be part of um, the people doing positive things to make sure that the environment is good for everyone, that, um, that we are protecting the environment, that we are properly managing and reducing our waste to make sure that we are living a very sustainable environment for our children, for our grandchildren, for the generations yet unborn. It's very important in the choices that we make that we are taking that conscious effort to make sure that we are making good choices to help the environment. Whatever a person's passion or interest in, they're going to follow that. So that idea of creating an army of one is to create a passion in another individual that they may not have thought about in the past and have them be that army of one to communicate to the rest of the people around their environment so that change can happen. So that someone will say, oh, rather than have a water bottle purchased, I'm just gonna take my mug and fill water from that cup. That is a change that we wanna have seen in every aspect of our life. Refuse, reuse, reduce, recycle, and recover. 
every level of the hierarchy as an individual as a company even as a, as a policy maker what can i do to ensure that we are reducing waste that we have in canada and i would like to close to say that it is being the second highest producer of waste in the world it shows how much work we have to do. So back in 2012, we, for um, the city of Calgary, were doing our ICI, which is called Industrial Commercial and Institutional Audits. And I needed to go and do a 26 business audits. And I came across um, a company. By chance, I happened to be at the landfill doing visual audits. And in the landfill, there was this 40 cubic yard roll off that pushed out all this material. So I went back and I said, I would like to be involved in a study with you to do a waste audit. And he's like, we're doing all we can. We have all these great diversions. And he was telling me all the programs. I said, but I was just at the landfill and I saw 40 cubic yards of items that had still a place that could go, a home, a reuse opportunity. What can you say about that? He didn't say anything. The Basel Treaty is um, a very, very useful treaty. However, not all nations have signed on to it. The rationalities in developing nations are a lot different. Um, you know, you need people to work and again, reuse is something that can be done, but developed nations are exporting e-waste and trash to these nations, which is money, but just devastating for the environment. So I think global pressure and leveling the playing field and having proper uh, disposal procedures is an opportunity for the developing nations to handle these minerals and to um, be able to do their own thing with, with, with recycling. One of the workshops that I talked about on a global side said, we're like a spider web. When you wiggle one side of the spider web, the rest of the web is also going to feel that vibration. So when we decide to have reusables, is the whole life cycle the best decision. I still think we need to evaluate that. Don't be consumeristic. Be thoughtful about what you are buying and needing and if it really is a need versus a luxury. Thank you for watching this documentary. I hope that at the end of this, that you have learned one or two things about how to better reduce and manage your wastes. And just as a reminder that um, managing and reducing waste is not an individual's like job it's a collective effort so be conscious of how you generate waste and have it in mind that what you do matters so refuse when you can reduce reuse recycle and we can recover some of the wastes